Of course the traditional and still one of the easiest and best ways of making a, a stereoscopic panorama is the single camera method uh, which has been in use since the 1990s as far as I know. Here's an ideal setup for that. Uh, it's a Sony a7R with a Samyang 12 millimeter fisheye lens on it. Uh, the camera is rolled 33.7 degrees to the left so that its uh, sensor diagonal is vertical. The lens covers slightly over 180 degrees vertically, but because the no parallax point, the, the lens node, the lens pupil, which is out here, is 78 millimeters forward of the rotation axis. Um, there's, a, there's a circle below and above that it does not see. This rig is uh, sitting on a uh, Nodal Ninja Mecha E2 uh, robot that uh, spins it around and the lens is mounted in a ring, also a Nodal Ninja ring by this arc of foot down here that is, goes into a clamp on top of the Mecha so it's easy to take apart put together. Battery of the Mecca is hanging below it, uh, on the opposite side from the camera. So this this rig is actually statically balanced quite nicely. And although I have it on a big, strong tripod here, I could actually put it on a little skinny tripod like that, and uh, take pictures with a very little or no nadir obstruction. Here's what it looks like taking pictures. 24 around. This will probably also give you a nice sense of the mechanics of the thing. We'll stop there. Um, now I'll show you how I uh, stitch a set of images produced by this rig. Load all those 24 images into PT GUI 12. You can see that they're all rolled 33 degrees and spaced very close together. 15 degrees between views. On the Source Images tab, I'm going to select them all. Right click on that selection. Take Load Mask. And I'm going to load my middle mask onto all the images. So now they all look like this. These masks overlap by about this much. About half. Well, let me first uh, load the correct starting lens profile for this lens and camera. And now I'm going to align images. PT GUI will make control points only where those red masks overlap. This has two advantages. One is that PT GUI will generate a lot fewer control points than if I had not masked the images. But more importantly, the control points that it does generate will be located closer to the final stitching seams where they will do the most good and be least affected by parallax errors, which are abundant between these images. Uh, so you see that now there's, this looks like a very good alignment of all 24 images. Uh, PT GUI has turned on its seam line optimizer so it's making funny seams here but if we switch those that off for the moment uh, you can see that this mask this set of masks actually forces PT GUI to make pretty nearly 
uh, vertical slices of the panorama. But that's not the mask we want for stitching. For stitching, I want to uh, load first the masks that select the right eye view, and well, and then the masks that select the left eye view, and I want to stitch two separate spheres. So let's go to the Source tab, right click on the still selected images, clear mask, because you have to get rid of the old one before you load the new one, load mask. Okay, I'm going to load just the sector that selects uh, the right slices for the left eye, which is the sector right of center. Uh, now you can see that the seam lines have become very straight and vertical and they're all pushed to the right in the middle compared to the top and bottom. Uh, that's just what I want. Um, so I'm going to go to the Create Panorama tab. I'm going to create a file name up here. Uh, with a dash L on the end to show that it's a left panorama. Before I stitch, I'm going to uh, actually go back here and improve the color and tone of this thing a bit. First of all, I'm going to turn the find optimum seams thingy back on. So now uh, it is forced by these masks, which are just a little wider than the space between views uh, to still make substantially straight vertical seams, but now it's running them around places that it thinks might be visible as stitch errors. And, and the other thing I want to do over here is apply tone mapping, which will brighten up the image and uh, maybe not that much. Oh, what the hell. Pull down the highs a little bit. And I'm also going to increase contrast a little bit and run the saturation up a bit. <coughs> and that'll make a nicer looking panorama. Now in the Create Panorama tab, I have all my images selected. I've got my file name set right, so I just stitch. So when that's done, I will go back to Source Images, right-click on the still selected images, clear the mask, right-click again, load the mask for the right patches, Verify that I've got it. Go back to create panorama. Put an R at the end of my file name. And stitch. But uh, now you can see, especially if I turn off the... Uh, seam optimizer that they're basically pushed left of center as you would expect because the sector mask is now left of center. So that's that's it. I'm going to save the PT GUI project under uh, the same name I used for the output files. And exit pizza GUI. Now down here, here's my new newly stitched stereo spheres, left and right. I'm going to drop them onto S view. 
I'm going to ask SU to display the uh, in, in grayscale anaglyph. And there it is. Uh, there is a stitch error there. I was expecting one there as well, but I don't see it. Basically, there's no stitch errors around the, the crack between the ceiling and the walls, which is where the nasty ones always show up. And the stereo disparity looks pretty nice and uniform in all directions. The zero disparity distance is clearly around the distance of me, my belt buckle. Uh, most people would, for flat screen viewing at least, prefer to have it uh, at the distance of the closest thing to the camera, which is probably this corner of the chair, but let's use this wall over here. Uh, S-View can uh, correct that. Do a parallax distance just by rotating the images with respect to each other, and if I wanted it to be like this in my final published version, I would use Photoshop to do the same thing. Uh, so, now this is a very respectable stereo panorama. Well, that's it. Now you know how to stitch a stereo panorama by the single camera method using precision sector masks. Thank you very much for watching.